Howdy fellow model railroaders, my name is Kevin Brown and I want to thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. In this episode, I've been given the opportunity to film Alan Satcamp's HO Scale Wisconsin River Division layout, an operations oriented layout that has recently undergone amazing changes. It, if you'll remember, it used to be known as the Twin Cities in Western. I did a video on that some time ago. But in the time he's had, with we all had, he has completely rebuilt his layout and uh, made major progress on the scenery. And uh, so I thought it'd be a, a great time to, uh, to share what he's accomplished. Now, uh, in order to uh, explore his layout, uh, we're going to follow two different trains while Alan narrates what's going on. Um, I think you're going to find it very interesting, so sit, sit back and enjoy. Canadian National SD60, L591, heads west from Stevens Point toward Wisconsin Rapids. The locomotive passes the former Wisconsin Central Depot and Annex, making its way towards Wisconsin Rapids. And crossing under an overpass and then through a grade crossing. The local is one of over 20 prototypical scheduled runs on the layout located in a 25 foot by 26 foot finished family room in the lower level of our home in Normal, Illinois. The Wisconsin River Division represents a conversion from the Twin Cities and Western theme originally modeled upon our move to Illinois from Kansas City in late August 2018 and previously featured in a prior Kevin Brown video. When I consider changing themes on my railroads, I always apply the 80-20 rule. In other words, if more than 20% of the existing track work needs modification in order to change and affect the changeover, then to me it's not worth the effort. In the case of the conversion from Twin Cities and Western to Wisconsin River Division, I estimate that less than 10% of the track had to be changed, such as adding a turnout or siding here or there to accommodate the new track plan and serve an industry. The Wisconsin River Division includes mostly the former Wisconsin Central Valley Subdivision, circa 2015. The main portion of the layout features Canadian National Trains from Stevens Point, which is a large active staging area with runs west and south through Wisconsin Rapids, Port Edwards, Nakusa and on to Nasita. We'll follow the action along the route taken by L558 out of Rapids, where the huge Stora Enzo paper mill dominates the scene, with areas for storing pulp in the yard, plus processing pulp, adding chemicals, and shipping out finished paper as well as wet lap. The southbound local is nicknamed and known as the Shuttle. Having acquired its consist from the Wisconsin Rapids Yard, it heads through the highway crossing passing the Wisconsin Rapids Industrial Park, which includes the O'Kalen, Warehousing of Wisconsin, or WOW, and General Chemical. Since its early fall, the Oktoberfest celebration is in full swing, with the beer garden doing a great business for the locals. L558 heads further south through farm country. Wisconsin is known as the Dairy State. The local passes Urkel Chemical in Port Edwards on its way to Nakusa 
and the large Dantar paper mill. Erko will be worked on the return trip to Wisconsin Rapids since it's a facing point move southbound. At the Domtar Mill, NW2 number 1001 is busy working the pulp yard as L558 arrives where it will drop off inbound cars on the passing siding. Cars for Urkel are also spotted on wood siding, so named years ago for a nearby cranberry bog. How do I know this? Thanks to former Canadian National Conductor Brian Crotsman, a wealth of information on CN operations in central Wisconsin was provided, for which I am very grateful. At the Domtar Mill, NW2 number 1001 pulls a pulpwood load onto the runaround track. The Domtar Mill dominates the scene here at Nakusa. The blue flags are located on the tracks just outside the building, indicating that those cars may not be moved without prior authorization by management. Having dropped off the cars for Dantar, as well as cars for the return trip to Urkel Chemical, L558 continues south through town and the iconic Holy's Nita Brew Bar, a local hangout and favorite local, located on Market Street. In the CETA, the Marquis Energy Ethanol Plant takes up an entire 12 foot by 2 foot peninsula on the layout. Here the local will spot cars and make pickups. The train will run around the cars on the passing siding, then head back to Nakusa to pick up cars for Urko Chemical. Most of the ethanol plant is made up of Walter's ethanol series cars, or buildings rather, that came out about 10 years ago. L558 has made its pickups and heads back to the passing siding where it will run around the consist of three Marcus energy ethanol cars which are custom decaled thanks to photography by Bruce Oldenburg and graphic artwork by Steve Gallick. This marks the end of the Canadian national portion of our layout tour. We'll continue with another look at the other major class one, it's Union Pacific Railroad. The Union Pacific portion of the layout is modeled beginning with staging yard, proviso yard, 
in Chicago. Here we see the SAM train, local proviso Wyville, the turn job that will head out, head north, pass through Grand Marsh, Wisconsin, through Adams, and on to Wyville. This represents the only modeler's license I used in terms of the geography for central Wisconsin, as Wyville, in fact, is not past Adams. UP SD 40-2 number 4202 makes its way through a grade crossing heading north towards Grand Marsh, Wisconsin and passing the Wilbur Ellis Fertilizer Company. This layout represents a maturation of my schedule as the layout includes a local net fast clock for the first time, set at 4 to 1 so that a 3 hour session can encompass a 12 hour AM or PM shift or trip for the railroad. It seems to have worked pretty well for the past several months since operations resumed in August 2021 with nearly a year and a half layoff. The sand train enters Adams, a division point on the UP. The train passes through and by West Rock, a cardboard box company, as well as Allied Cooperative. I'd like to acknowledge Rich Dalkey, who works for Allied Cooperative and bent over backwards to help me with ground level photos, not only of Allied in Adams, but also provided pictures of Allied in Wisconsin Rapids, since there were no, no good Google Earth ground level photos. He, along with a couple of the fellas who work at Dantar in Nakusa, gave me plenty of time and information in order and to enable me to accurately model their industries on my layout, for which I am very grateful. 4202 continues its way along the route heading towards Mesita, since the locomotive will have to make a runaround move in order to work the high crush sand track plant on its way back. This area of the layout is the only blob, and the train also enters the quiet zone where there are no industries whatsoever or sightings. The locomotive crosses the Lemon Wire River on its way down to Mesita. It's good to have a portion of this busy switching layout where there is no activity, no industries, no passing sightings, just scenery, and that's by design and intent. At Mesita, the locomotive will run around its train in order to work high crush in Wyville on its way back to Chicago. Sand train has completed its work in Wyville and it's on its way back through Adams. It's one of several UP trains on the route with another important one being the local that travels from Adams to Wisconsin Rapids where it interchanges with the Canadian National. In addition to the interchange with the Canadian National in Wisconsin Rapids, 
There's also a coal train, Union Pacific, Black Thunder, to Weston, Wisconsin, which has an interesting route. The train stops at Witt Siding in Nakusa, where a CN crew takes over to take it the rest of the way as C705. The last important Union Pacific train on the railroad is the local that runs from Proviso Yard to Adams and later returns after work is completed. But this scene at Wisconsin Rapids is my favorite one and favorite portion of the layout. Here in GP38-2 pulls a cut of cars from store Enzo Paper Mill. I want to thank Mike Rochiers, production assistant and engineer, and director cameraman Kevin Brown for creating this YouTube video this afternoon. Without their assistance, it would not have taken place. Allen's Wisconsin River Division layout is clearly a layout designed for operations, and therefore, I don't think you can have a complete picture without seeing how it works in action. So here's some scenes from the latest operating session I was lucky enough to attend, and uh, show you how this stuff works when it's all put together. I'm very impressed with the progress that Alan has made on his layout uh, and the whole concept of uh, refreshing a layout by changing minimal track work but adapting it to a new historical prototype or even I guess you could do it for any type sort of layout and uh, uh, essentially turning what could be a stale layout into something brand new and interesting and I, I think there's lessons to be learned from that I'm sure other of my viewers have probably gone through that so if you're interested uh, I first looked at his layout, it's been a while ago, it's all the way back at episode 15, A Visit to the Twin Cities in Western. And if, you get, if you're interested, take a, take a look at that and compare it to what he has now, and I think you'll find that he really has, with minimal effort, in track work at least, he's changed his layout around and come up with something completely new, different, and interesting. So, you might find that interesting. Well, needless to say, I'm very glad that Alan has moved into my neck of the woods from, uh, I think it was Kansas City area. Uh, he's just been a great guy to, to hang out with. I've learned a great deal from him. He, is, he runs uh, operating sessions as well as anybody I've ever seen, and I, I try and learn what I can from him. And uh, his layout is, as you can see, not, and not only scenically uh, well done, but it's also just a blast to operate on. 
Um, so, uh, that's about all I've got on Alan's layout. Now, as far as my future plans, my next step is to take the module that's probably out of scene over there, my bridge module, and put scenery on it. That's my uh, Christmas break project. I've never done a water uh, feature, so we'll see how well that works out. Um, so that's kind of my future and also kind of all I've got for this, uh, this video today. Um, so as always, if you like what you saw, please hit like and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time.